in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. All praise and all gratitude due to our Lord, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider. May his peace and blessings be upon all of his messengers and prophets that he sent to guide us and enlighten us, in particular the seal of the messengers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. May the peace of the Lord be upon him and his progeny and his family and upon his righteous companions and upon you, my dear brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the third chapter in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Imran, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Wa'tasimu Bihablillahi Jami'an Wala Tafarraku, Wathkuru Ni'matallahi Alaikum, Ith Kuntum A'da'an Fa'allafa Bayna Qulubikum, Fa'asbahtum Bini'matihi Ikhwana, وكنتم على شفا حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منها كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تهتدون صدق الله العلي العظيم. We are embarking on the second series or the second part of inquiries about Shia Islam, where we intend to explain and to unfold some of the mysteries and also to clarify some of the misconceptions that surrounds the school of Ahlul Bayt, the school of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family, his progeny. The Shia Muslim school of thought. Despite the rhetoric, the negative rhetoric and the negative stereotyping that goes on and on against the followers of Ahlul Bayt worldwide, we see there is a huge, huge success and Shia Islam is making successful strides in the Middle East, in Europe, in North America, and elsewhere. And this is a testimony to the fact that the school of Ahlul Bayt, the school of Shia Islam, is based on logic. It is based on the proof. It is based on the Holy Quran and the tradition of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Many intellectuals worldwide are being attracted to this school of thought after intense studying, intense research, and reading and comparison between the school of Ahlul Bayt and other schools of thought in Islam, one can find the difference and can find that school of Ahlul Bayt, they derive their principles and values and thoughts and foundations from the Holy Quran and the authentic tradition, the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Despotic regimes, they've been allocating a huge amount of money of their resources to spread lies against the school of Ahlul Bayt to brand them as being heretics or sometimes polytheist, mushrikeen. 
And despite these efforts, which are represented by spreading, printing books, all sorts of literatures, satellite TVs, brainwashing some students of knowledge, sending some delegates to Europe, to North America, to Africa, to elsewhere as imams and religious leaders to spread the lies against the Ahlul Bayt. To make the school of Ahlul Bayt looks as being something odd, something strange, something deviant from the path of the Islam. Despite all these attempts, we can see the advancement day by day. It's very visible. When you travel, when you travel to some countries in North Africa, in the Middle East, in Europe and America and Canada, you can see that Shia Islam, the school of the Prophet and his family, the genuine Islam, is making advancements in territories that before these territories never heard about Ahlul Bayt never heard about Shia Muslims. And this is again another testimony to the fact mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, He promises in chapter 9, Surah At-Tawbah, verse 32, they desire, they desire to extinguish God's light with their mouths yuriduna liyutfi'u nur Allah bi afwahihim wa ya'ba Allah illa an yutimma nurah but god will not allow but that his light should be perfected yutimma nurahu walaw karihal even though the unbelievers may detest even though the unbelievers or the non-believers may detest that may dislike it but the light of God has to reach out to the whole universe to all mankind slowly slowly we see the difference we see the difference you cannot fight logic you cannot fight rationality you cannot fight a school of thought that is based on Burhan, قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ The evidence, the proof, you cannot fight it for a long time. Eventually, the truth will emerge. Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wassalam, states, الحق جديد Truth will be always fresh. وَإِنْ طَالَتْ بِهِ الْأَيَامِ even if it takes long periods of time. But truth will emerge eventually and succeed and prevail. وَالْبَاطِلُ مَخْذُولُ Falsehood is bound to perish. Is bound to perish. And وَإِنْ نَصَرَهُ أَقْوَامٌ Even if that falsehood is supported by people, by powers, by wealth, by government, by falsification, slandering, defamation, maligning others, telling lies about others, distorting the facts about others, that Falsehood is bound to perish. And this is what we see. Hundreds of millions of dollars being spent to fight Shia Islam, to fight the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the closest people to the Prophet. 
by certain traditions. I don't want to name them. Many of you are aware of them. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Rather than spreading, spending this money on teaching the Muslims the Islamic mannerism, Islamic akhlaq, the beauty of Islam, they are spending that money on distortion, on sheer lies. But yet, we see the opposite result of that. We see people are drawn and attracted to the truth, to the reality, to the haq, to as-sidq. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. O who you believe, fear God and be with those who are truthful. Follow those who are truthful. This is what we see. They are following those who speak the truth. You cannot conceal the truth. Maybe one can conceal it for a few days, few weeks, few months, few years. At the end of the day, the truth is going to emerge strong. And this is exactly what we see within this sectarian, sectarian war against the school of Ahlul Bayt in many different countries. So in these series that we are doing inquiries about Shia Islam, we will have a scientific objective approach to issues that we disagree upon. Definitely we agree upon many other issues and we should focus, and I repeat, we should focus on the commonalities, on the common goals, the common stage and foundation that we share with each other. Many things we share with each other that are common. We agree, all the Muslims, they agree upon them. However, we differ. We differ on certain issues. And it is your right to understand this difference. It is your right to know why we differ, what areas, and what are the reasons for this difference. And when we study these differences, we are not studying them in order to bash each other or destroy each other. We have only one goal. The goal is fact-finding mission. We are on a path every single day of our life is a struggle to find the truth, to find the facts. What exactly happened? What does God want, want from me? What is the real deen, the real path of God? Who are the true representatives of God? How can I reach him through a peaceful, a peaceful path? This is our intention. We struggle to reach that path through dialogue, through research, not through negative stereotyping, not through Shia phobia or Sunni phobia or Islamophobia, but through a scientific method and approach. ولا تقف ما ليس لك به علم إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولة. Never utter anything without knowledge, because you will be held, you will be held accountable. إن السمع the hearing, والبصر the vision, and the brain the mind, والفؤاد كل أولئك all these are responsible before God. It's a big responsibility. Therefore, we did the first 
series or the first part of inquiries about Shia Islam last year in Ramadan of 1434 Hijri and this is the second part and as I mentioned earlier my goal my intention is to present the school of Ahlul Bayt the school of Shia Islam based on logic based on the Holy Quran based on the evidence from the Sunnah the tradition of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I mostly use in my research the references that belong to our Sunni brothers from their own tradition and my goal of this series is to promote understanding promote intra intra-faith dialogue intra-faith dialogue between Shia Islam and Sunni Islam is to promote respect is to encourage the spirit of research intellectual research religious research that is based on logic and rationality that is based on reason not sheer emotions we intend to get closer to each other our intention is not to fight our intention is to work together and live together in peace and try to understand each other and therefore I think we have a long way ahead of us a long way of struggle I invite the intellectuals in both the traditions the ulama the scholars the seminaries the universities academician religious leaders imams the influentials even the politicians to try to get close to each other to put enmity and hostilities degrading each other to put it aside and resort to logic resort to the bayan al hikmah wal mawidat al hasana to wisdom good admonishing good statements especially in in europe and in america we don't have any political pressure here from any government we don't live under tyranny or oppression so we have more freedom here to reach out to each other let's stay away from prejudice from bias from slandering each other from bashing each other calling each other names that would not help us that will exacerbate the hatred and the division and the bloodshed among the Muslims God would not be happy about that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would not be happy about that the good Sahaba of the Prophet would not be happy about that. Ahlul Bayt, the family of the Prophet, would not be happy about that. Do not divide each other. Do not shatter your unity. Resort to harmony. Resort to respect. Resort to freedom. This is the way. This is the peaceful way. We can be strong. Today, Islam is suffering. We have internal bleeding within the Muslim Ummah, the Muslim community worldwide. We have suspicion between the Muslims. We have hatred between the Muslims. We have to change it. And we can only change it through an open, an honest, an objective, a constructive dialogue. Promoting understanding and love and respect between the followers of the Islamic faith, the followers of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.